The goal of our project is to build materials uh, with atomic precision and do this for quantum information sciences, or QIS. So in QIS, uh, we seek ways to encode and manipulate information in quantum state. We need to be able to create material systems that can host quantum states uh, that we can control and then allow them to entangle. So point defects in materials can be excellent candidates for this. Because it's an artificial atom, we can tune the materials around it to actually tune these uh, energy states to get what we want. However, we currently lack technology uh, to control atoms well enough in materials to create the defects we want and where we want. Uh, and this is what we are aiming to do in this project. We are seeking ways to use the scanning transmission electron microscope, or STEM, uh, to do this. Now, one of the advantages of the STEM, as we call it, is that it gives you an image which really looks like a photograph of your sample. As the electrons transmit through the sample, the beam of electrons loses some energy which is characteristic of the energy levels inside the sample. We then record those transmitted electrons in a variety of detectors. And one of the most useful signals we can get out is electron spectroscopy. An alternative signal that we can detect in the electron microscope is to just record the diffraction pattern as a function of position. And this is a very powerful technique um, because the vast array of data that it generates can be used to figure out the phase of the electrons that are transmitted through the sample. And so you can really get uh, more of the details of the structure and perhaps even some of the three-dimensional information about your sample. And you can reconstruct that to tell you about the electronic and magnetic properties of your sample at or near atomic resolution. We have two different paradigms that are meeting together. So one is this top-down paradigm where, where, where we're going to uh, position the beam and make some change. But we're also relying on a bottom-up process to complete that change. And that is a diffusion of atoms on the surface and the spontaneous attachment of those atoms to a defect location. We want to do this in the microscope to, to change the parameters around our sample in such a way that spontaneous changes will occur where our beam is located. We've come up with this term, the synthoscope. So we're combining a microscope with a synthesis chamber and attempting to be able to influence materials and grow things in a chamber the size of an atom. It's a really exciting time in TM because we're sort of seeing a paradigm shift from an old paradigm of what can we see to a new paradigm of what can we do. We are using an electron beam as both a scalpel and as our imaging tool. With these new in situ uh, excitation modes, we can try to apply fields, we can try to apply strain, uh, change the structure around the defects, change the inner layer stackings that we can get between the layers and do this just dynamically. And we also can try to do things like image the dynamics of these defects in response to, you know, short pulse electrical or photo excitations, uh, and then actually try to achieve the time resolutions to see the responses from these excitations of the defects at atomic resolution live in the microscope. Controlling matter at the atomic level is a very challenging task. We've got to keep everything stable and then measure everything without missing a bit. That's where our computer models come in. We use these models run on some of the most powerful supercomputers to predict which structure will be hold up well. This step comes before we even get close to an electron microscope. With these models, we can sort through the countless ways atoms can be arranged and figure out how they are likely to behave under different experimental conditions. This saves a tremendous amount of time and money and also allows us to quickly zoom in on the most exciting things. It's this kind of modeling that energizes our experiments and speeds up the rate at which we discover new things. Presently, our focus is on transitioning our SEM seal work to scanning transmission electron microscopy, or STEM. 
While SEMCO allows for nanoscale feature design, STEMCO offers the, the capability to design atomic scale defects while deepening our understanding of their local luminescent properties. Within this framework, we can begin to image doped graphene with, with various elements to generate specific doping configurations while monitoring their emission characteristics. This advancement empowers us to pioneer the next generation of quantum-based emitters and facilitates broader applications in quantum sensing, computing, and networking. In essence, the techniques we're pioneering in the research underway at Oak Ridge National Lab are pivotal in advancing much-needed quantum-based designs. The end goal is to be able to build the technology of the future. What we would like to be able to do is, in practice, put all the atoms where we want and experimentally see what happens when you arrange the atoms in that way. And so um, we're, we're a long ways from being able to do what the theorists can do, but we're making steady progress in that direction. So we're developing these techniques uh, and these technologies and the expertise to use them so that scientists from around the world can come here uh, and use them for their own research as well.